We're here on a motion to extend filed by uh, Ms. Archer on behalf of the mother who's incarcerated. Mr. Alvey's with us for the department. Uh, does anyone know, is, is Brandy Coberly, is she with CASA? She is, Your Honor. Okay. All right. I'll let her in. So CASA is with us. Mr. Barfield is not with us again. We're trying to locate him. Seems to be an everyday deal with him anymore. So uh, Mr. Michelson's with us representing the father, Mr. Herrera, who is with us. And again, Ms. Archer's with us. Her client's incarcerated. Uh, I'm not going to wait on Mr. Barfield. So, all right, then, uh, Ms. Archer, this is your motion. I don't know if you have, I've read the motion. I've read Mr. Michelson's objection. I don't know if you have any evidence to put on or. Well, I was hoping my client would be attending. We've tried to contact the prison and we've sent them links, but I'm not, apparently she won't be able to come or I would have called her as a witness. And I okay. could call, I could call Summer Daniels. It's up to you. Uh, okay. I might, I tell you, my big question is we were, our last hearing was on June 7th of 2023. And at that time, the notes indicated that your client was getting ready to plead to a six year sentence uh, for criminal trespass, uh, theft. So I haven't practiced criminal law in a long time, but I find it hard to believe that she can be out of jail in February of 2024 when she didn't plead until after June 7th of 2023 on a six year sentence. Do you know anything about that? Or well, is, that just, is that her first eligible parole date? Well, she says that she's in a special program and that once she completes it in February, she should be released. And it may take two weeks for her to get out. But at that time, she should be released. And these were charges that occurred. Well, the crime occurred before Carter was even born. And so the crime happened. She had the baby, was raising the baby, then became incarcerated. But she she is supposed to be out by March. Well, I'll tell you. Uh, Mr. Michelson, I, I, I agree with what you stated that, I mean, I've read the cases that say that incarceration is brought on by the parent themselves, and that's not an extraordinary circumstance. But is it my understanding that the child is currently placed with Mr. Herrera? Yes, Your yeah. Honor. Okay. Well, I tell you, I, if you'd like to, Ms. Archer, I'll, I'll uh, recess this case. I'd like to hear from your client as uh, to hear a, an explanation of how she thinks she can be out that early. I'm, I'm I don't see any harm in recess in this case, and you can try again to set it up where she can attend. Okay, uh, Haley, Haley, in my office, I mean, we've sent an order to the prison, and um, we, we've really done our best to arrange for her to be at this hearing as well as the next hearing. Okay, well, uh, if, if I don't have any more to go on than what I've heard today, I'd be inclined to deny it, but I'm giving you the option to recess it, and you can try to get her uh, set up again so that I can hear from her how she thinks she can be out by the 1st of March. So. Okay. Am I correct that um, doesn't the law say that the case can be extended um, if a parent's made a good faith effort to work services? Yeah, you're right. But I, I've, I've got no evidence of that because your client's not here to tell me what good faith effort she's done unless you want to try to call. I, I'm just giving you the option to postpone it to you and try and get her or we can go forward today and you can call um, Miss Daniels as your witness. Well, I want to have the best shot available. Um so if that means getting my client here, I can try. Um, okay. or, but Summer Summer does know about my client's services. And then I submitted as the exhibit the program that she's doing in the prison right now that we're hoping will qualify. Well, it may qualify that she's doing a service. I'm not sure that that gets you over the threshold of being uh, extraordinary circumstance because I've, I've read the case that Mr. Michelson stated, and that's what it says is that the, the fact that your client is in prison is not an extraordinary circumstance that warrants that I have to extend the case. So it's just really okay. up to you. I'm just giving you okay. the option. Well, let me, um, I'll, I'll try to have more contact with the prison. I'm really doing my best. I know you are. I'm not blaming you. I'm just <laughs> trying to give your client another shot at the, another bite at the apple. Okay. So, Thank you, Judge. I uh, appreciate that. Just get with Haley to get a date. So then you can contact the prison and say, this is when I need her to appear and I'll sign any kind of order you want me to. Okay. But, um, okay. I wanted to let you know that next Wednesday we do have a final set in this case. Um, well, we've got a dismissal date of uh, December 18th, so we can move that. Okay. I, I would like to move that because I have to be in federal court in Lubbock next Wednesday. Okay. Just get with Haley. We'll get a new date for that. This hearing, we'll get a new date for the final and we can get it out to everybody. And uh, now just, you know, next, I, I will hear it the next time. If, if, if the prison won't cooperate, I'm going to have to make a decision on this extension. So. Absolutely. Well, thank you. And thank 
Thanks You're to welcome. all of you who appeared at 8.30 on a Friday for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for those of you involved, I'll be back at nine o'clock to call another motion to extend on another, Randall, oh, no, that's a Randall County case. So Mr. Albee, I think I'll see you later in the morning. And Judge, that was actually- Oh, that's right, we settled it. <laughs> okay, so I can go have my breakfast now. We don't come back until, what, Haley, is it 10.30? No, 9.30. Yeah, 9.30. I'll be back at 9.30 on a Randall County motion to participate. Ms. Wiggins is with us for the department. Mr. Ingram is with us representing the children. Ms. Samora, the mother, is with us. Her attorney, Jeff Hill, is not with us yet, and he's not in the waiting room. We'll give him a couple of minutes. Haley, you might try to contact him. I can do that. All right, then. Ms. Wiggins, you may proceed. Thank you, Judge. I call Gary Neighbors. Hey, um, Officer Neighbors, how are you currently employed? I'm a detective with the Emerald Police Department, and I work in the Violent Crimes Unit. And during the course of your employment, um, well, just are you certified police officer? Yes, I am. And were you working August 22nd of 2023? Yes, I was. Listen, let me check the date because if it's a weekend, I wasn't. But okay. uh, the 22nd, which is a Tuesday, yes, I was. Okay. And did you receive information about a case involving um, aggravated assault with a deadly weapon um, with two Zamora sisters and... Um, Mr. Gallon or Gallon? Yes, I did. And did you begin your investigation on August 25th of 2023? Uh, on August 22nd, I was made aware of it. I was spoke to CPS about the uh, parts of the case. Okay. And on the 25th, did you go to uh, La Supra? Yes. Okay. And did you, uh, what were you doing at that location? I went there to view um, any surveillance video they had of their okay. parking lot. And were you able to view the the video that was in relation to the the offense you were investigating? Yes. And at that time, had you talked to any witnesses before you viewed that video? I believe I spoke to uh, Ms. Santos, who uh, kind of gave me the lowdown of uh, what occurred. Okay. And on that video, were you able to view um, all the parties that were involved in this incident? Yes. And were you able to identify the, the vehicles that were involved as well? Don't believe that I ran the vehicles for VIN numbers, but I associated each car with each person. Okay. And did they match the description of the, the witnesses gave for vehicles in that incident? Yes. Yes. And regarding the incident, um, your suspects in the case were, were they Crystal and Kristen Zamora? Yes. And in regards specifically to Crystal, um, when does she does she arrive at the very beginning or does she come in uh, towards the middle of the altercation? She comes in um, after the altercation's already started and after there's been quite a bit of commotion going on. Okay. And um, what do you view her uh, doing on the video? She uh, exits the wrap-up uh, passenger. Judge, me, I want to object to this uh, line of questioning and testimony. This is, this is all secondhand information. Uh, it's hearsay with respect to this officer. Uh, if, if they want to put this video in evidence uh, and lay a proper foundation and play it, they're free to do so. But but having this officer describe what's on this video is all hearsay. Well, I don't know if it's hearsay, but it's not best evidence if we've got a video. So I'll I'll uh, sustain a best evidence objection. Now, in regards to um, the information that you received from Ms. Santos, is it consistent with what would, what you viewed on the recording? Yes. Okay. And based on the recording and other evidence that you had uh, accumulated, did you present um, charges to the Potter County District Attorney's Office against Crystal Zamora? Yes, I did. And was that for the offense of aggravated assault with a deadly weapon? Yes, it was. I'll pass the witness, Judge. All right. Thank you, Mr. Hill. Uh, no questions, Judge. All right. Mr. Ingram. No questions. All right. Anyone have follow-ups for uh, Detective Neighbors? No, Your Honor. All right. Can he be excused? Please, Judge. No objection. All right. All right. No objections. Then, uh, Detective Neighbors, I'll go ahead and remove you so that you can go about your day's business. Thank you for your testimony and thank you for your service. Yes, sir. Thank you. I'll call Adriana Santos. Miss Santos, um, were you involved in a altercation on August 20th of 2023? Yes. And where were you when um, something first happened on that day? Uh, 
it all started when we were leaving Thompson Park. Okay. And what was the first thing that happened after you left Thompson Park? Uh, uh, Danielle ran into my friend's car getting onto highway going towards getting back onto the Kent, the Dumas Highway. You know, that little, um, the little, uh, I don't know. It's not the side, uh, not the side street, but the the street, to, the little street that they have right there to get onto the, the Dumas Highway. Okay, are you talking about the access road? No, not the access road. The one to get on is that the, is that what it's called? The access road, not the one on the side of the road. But... Let's let's move on. It's a road. Okay. okay. All right. And um, what happens when you are on that particular road? Um, Danielle ran her car into my friend's car. And then she got out and tried to run to the back of the, or run to the passenger side. That was the passenger side. And the window was rolled out a little bit. And at that point, she tried to, she tried to swing at me, but I weaved it. And then from there, my friend got back in his car and uh, she, he took off. And from there, we stopped at the, the El Supermercado, right there off Buchanan. Okay, let me oh, back up a little bit. Uh, let me back up a little bit, okay? Who are you in the car with? Uh, it's me and my friend, uh, George. Okay, and you and George were driving in a vehicle, is that correct? Yes. And when you were in the vehicle, did you said another vehicle hit yours, is that correct? Yes. And you indicated the driver was Danielle. Was that Danielle Kristen Zamora? Yes. Now, at one point in time, did y'all make it to La Supra supermarket? Yes. Uh, did y'all stop at that supermarket? We did. We I, I had already assumed that since we took off, she wasn't right behind us. The, you know, he's like, all right, one more pull right here. Let me see what she did in my car. So as he gets off, um, she pulls up and then um she gets out and she's uh, trying to come back to the passenger side. She kept saying, he kept saying, that's not her. That's not her. So then she comes up to the window and she asked me if I was the girl that he, she was thinking I was. And I told her, no. So I okay. got out of the car. Let me, let me stop you there. Just, just a second. Let me, let me ask you questions and then you answer just a little bit. Okay. 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 So when you, you pulled into the supermarket, you're, you're stopped at the inside the parking lot. Is that correct? Yes, on the side where they have their dumpsters. Okay. And did the vehicle that hit the car previously pull into the, the parking lot as well? Yes. And did that individual who, who hit you, Miss Samora, did she get out of the vehicle and come and speak with you? At this point in time, Crystal was the one that tried to hit me, not Danielle. Um, Danielle came up and asked me if I was who... I she I'm thought sorry. I was, and I told her no. Okay. I, I okay. can't hear her. I can't hear her. I didn't make out a thing she said. Okay. Um, when you, let me let me try again, Judge. When you were in the parking lot, you indicated that Kristen Zamora was the one that hit the car. Is that correct? Yes. At, a, at subsequent to that, did Crystal Zamora also pull into the parking lot? She did a little bit after. Okay. And at any point, did Crystal Zamora um, assault you or attempt to assault you? She attempted to assault me with a crowbar. She busted the window out on the passenger housing. And then she w went around well, as I was trying to get out from, because when well, she busted it, I don't know if the door got jammed or what, but I couldn't get it open. So I climbed over to get out through the driver's side. And she came around and she was trying to stab me with that crowbar. And that's whenever she tried to uh, pull the key out because she seen that I was trying to turn the car on. And uh, that's when my friend grabbed her and pulled her out. Pull pulled her out. Okay. And so just just to, to clarify, that was Crystal Zamora. Um, and she you said she busted a, a window out. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And did that hurt you in any way? Did you get physically hurt from that? Um, I just got cuts on my legs from the glass. Okay. I caught when she when she swung the crowbar, I caught it. So she she didn't actually hit me. But if I wouldn't have caught it, she would have hit me right in the face. 
Okay. And you indicated that she had the crowbar and she, she swung at you. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. And at any point in time, did you see any children present? Yes, there were in both vehicles. Then neither one, none of them little kids had car seats or anything, or at least not in them buckled up. The, the little girl, one of the little girls in Danielle's car was halfway hanging out of the car. Okay. And then and the let me stop oldest you. daughter. Okay. Let me, sorry, let me start you there. Um, Crystal Zamora, you said both cars. Did did kids come out of Crystal Zamora's car? Yes, some some uh, older boy did. He's the one who pulled her out when she pulled because she tried to come into in in. Well, she came in a little bit. Whenever I grabbed the crowbar, I pulled her in, and then that boy pulled her back out. I don't know. He could have been like maybe twelve, thirteen. Okay, ma'am, if you would please just answer only the question you're asked. And um, at that point in time, um, or subsequent to that, did everyone then leave and disperse? No. Af after the altercation? Oh, after, yes. Okay, all right, I'll pass the witness, Judge. All right, Mr. Hill. Thank you, Judge. Ma'am, do you, uh, this older boy that you're talking about, do you know who that boy is? No, I don't know Crystal's kids. Precisely, I. Whenever I grew up with um, Danielle, well, I didn't grow up with Danielle. Danielle's my uncle's. Um, her oldest daughter is my uncle's daughter, and that's the only reason why I know Danielle. I don't really know Crystal like that or her kids. So still, I wouldn't be able to tell you. Okay, Ma'am, excuse me. You've, an, you've answered the question. Just answer only what you're asked instead of just keep on talking. So, so again, just to make sure I understand you, this older boy that you thought was maybe 12 or 13 that came out of Crystal's car uh, and that pulled her away from your vehicle, you don't know who this child is. Just uh, You just know that it's a boy 12 or 13 years old. Yes. Okay. And it came from her car. Okay. Was that the only child in her car that you're aware of? No. The, I want to say there was like four, maybe five kids in there. Ranging from what ages to what age, from what age to what age, just to the best of your uh, estimation. Maybe from 12 to maybe around five-ish, six-ish, maybe. Okay. And do you know who any of those children are or were? Not the ones in her vehicle, no. Okay. So four or five kids in the car, ranging from ages 12 to five to 12, but you don't know who any of them were? No, I know what they look like. I only seen them, but I didn't actually, uh, like, I don't know them. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I'll pass the witness. All right, Mr. Ingram. No questions. Any follow-ups for Ms. Santos? No, Your Honor. May she be excused? Uh, yes, please. All right, Ms. Santos, I'll go ahead and remove you so you can go about your day's business. Thank you for your testimony. Witnesses? Uh, yes, I call Heather Denneke. Ms. Wiggins. Thank you, Judge. Um, how are you currently employed? I'm an investigator with the Texas Department of Family and Protective Services. And um, how long have you been an investigator for the department? Uh, almost four years. And regarding this case, um, did you receive an intake on August uh, 20, or did the department receive an intake on August 21st of 2023? Yes. And what was the intake allegations? The intake was that... Um, that an aunt rear-ended a car while the cousins were in the car with her. It's kind of confusing. Um, basically, that, that Kristen had rear-ended a car while the children were in the car with her. Um, they were angry because they thought that George, who was in the other car, was with his girlfriend. Um, they got out and started fist fighting, and then um, a gun was pulled out at one point and shot, and that Crystal was also there with her children. And she busted out the passenger window of George's car with a crowbar while Adriana was sitting there. Okay. And as part of your investigation, um, did you attempt to interview the children of Crystal Zamora? I did attempt and I, I did eventually get to interview them. Okay. And um, were you able, what child were you able to speak with? I spoke with Jayla, King, and Xavier. Xavier didn't want to be interviewed. Jayla oh, was born 2016. in 2016. I apologize. 
Um, and so when you spoke with her, did she talk about anything that happened um, on that day that you were investigating? I don't believe that she did. Okay. And in regards to the other children, did you attempt to have them interviewed at the bridge? I attempted to have um, Xadrian interviewed at the bridge. And um, he is, how old is he? I believe he's 14. Let me check. Yeah, he's 14. Okay. And in regards to that, did you get an order to aid from the court to have him interviewed at the bridge? We got an order to have him interviewed. So. Okay. And I'm sorry to interrupt. Which, which child are we talking about? Ex Xadrian or Xavier? Xadrian. Okay. Thank you. And in regards to that, did you, was he transported to the bridge in order for him to be interviewed? Yes, he was. And was he ever able to be interviewed at the bridge? No, he was not. And at that time, did Crystal Zamora at any point come up to the uh, office or the bridge office? She did. And what was her demeanor like when she was there? I only briefly saw her, but she was raising her voice. She was at the door and wanted to be let in. Okay. Now, in regards to um, that incident, um, did she cooperate at all with investigations? At the bridge? Is that what you're asking? Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. No, she didn't cooperate at the bridge. Have you ever spoken with her regarding this investigation? I have. And has she been cooperative with the department? After we got the order to aid, she did let me see her house and did allow access to her kids to be interviewed. She did not want to be interviewed. Okay. And at that point in time, um, based on, were you able to talk to them about this incident? The children? Yes. Yes, I was. Okay. And what did they say about that incident? Uh, that nothing like that had ever happened. And in regards to Miss um, Samora, you indicated that she was not willing to talk with you. Is that correct? Correct. And um, at that point in time, were services were services offered to Miss Samora? Yes. And what was the attempt, or what was the rationale for the department offices? I'm sorry, you cut out a little bit. Oh, I'm, I apologize. What were, what was the reason why the department offered her services? What were we trying to mitigate in the house? We're just trying to to mitigate um, future future trauma or possible injury to the children if there's another incident of physical violence where they're present. And what services are we requesting that Miss Samora complete to help mitigate the uh, potential abuse in in the future? Counseling, anger management, rational behavior therapy, and WAY, which is Women Against um, Violence. It's domestic violence class for women. Okay. And as part of that, do you believe that that would help alleviate um, the department's concerns of any potential future harm that the children may have? Yes, I do. And in regards to the children, are we asking for any services or counseling for them um, be due to the fact that there was this incident? Yes, I think that would be a good idea. And are we asking that um, Ms. Samora be ordered to facilitate that counseling for the children to, to make appointments and, and take them to those appointments? Yes. I'll pass the witness, Judge. All right, Mr. Hill. So if I, if I understand you correctly, ma'am, um, you did attempt to speak to Ms. Zamora's children uh, on a couple of different occasions, but the, nobody ever stated, nobody, by, when I say nobody, I mean the children, none of the children ever uh, confirmed or stated that uh, the incident took place. Would that be accurate? Yes. The only information that you have that, that Ms. Morris' children might have been present would be for would be from just the the intake call to CPS. Would that be accurate? There's also a video that I watched that shows it. That I can okay, I'm going to object to this video again for the same reason I objected previously. If there's a video, uh, best evidence yes. of this video, 
she was just answering your question. She said she saw a video. So uh, over a, okay. I, I won't let her testify to what she saw in the video. Okay, thank you, ma'am. I'll pass the witness. All right, Mr. Ingram. No questions. All right, anyone have follow-ups for Ms. Denneke? No, Your Honor. Can she be excused? No um, if she'll, she probably wants to say, Judge. Yeah, okay. I want to say. Okay, all right, you're welcome to. Okay, then, uh, Ms. Wiggins, any other witnesses? No, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Mr. Hill, any witnesses? Uh, Judge, may I have a, a, a breakout room briefly with uh, Ms. Zamora? She's back with us. Okay. All right, then, Mr. Hill, did you have any witnesses? No, sir. All right, Mr. Ingram, any witnesses? No witnesses. All right, to Mr. Ingram, recommendations? Judge, we've talked to the kids. They all report that they're doing well, all doing well in school. No one's on any meds, no problems whatsoever. Uh, I just do not feel the evidence in this case merits uh, the granting of the motion to participate. Okay. All right, Ms. Wiggins, any response? Yes, Judge. I think with a mother being involved in an altercation with kids present, um, I think that's a strong indication that there is a potential for violence in the future and therefore to protect the children and the family stability and home. I do believe that her working services to help mitigate um, anger and aggression would be very appropriate in this case and would help um, the entire family and situation. All right. Okay. Based on the evidence of and uh, I'm going to grant the department's motion partially. I'm going to order that Ms. Samora undergo counseling and continue that counseling as long as recommended by the counselor and that she complete anger management. I'm not going to order the WAVE program and I will order the rational behavior therapy. It's a one time, my understanding, it's a one time, one day program. So I will, I will not order the WAVE program. Uh, I don't, I haven't heard any evidence that would warrant me to order counseling for the children, especially based on Mr. Ingram's statement. So. Okay, that's the court's ruling. Uh, do we want a compliance hearing at any point? Uh, yes, just, just two months out. I think uh, no, I've only got one other person in the waiting room. That's a lawyer for a later hearing. So, Ms. Gutierrez, you may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. The department calls Mavis Opoku Asante. Okay, great. Um, where is he currently placed? Uh, um, Caleb is placed in Houston at the moment. Okay. And he was placed there, according to your court report, on August 18, 2023. Is that correct? Correct. And what was the cause of the change for placement? The cause of the change for placement was because the old placement needed some um, administrative purposes. I'm sorry, say that again? It was for administrative purposes. Can you please explain what that means? Okay, so uh, Caleb, uh, it's supposed to be by a Roomba himself and they needed more money for that. So, and St. Francis was not willing to pay that. So they had to move him to a different place. Okay. Now, um, Caleb needing a room by himself, what caused that to be decided? Uh, it was due to allegations of sexual abuse. Your Honor, can we go ahead and um, discontinue the line?